All right, guys, so here we have another problem dealing with rational equations, and we're dealing with a word problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem, and then we'll go over how to set it up. It says a kayaker travels six miles upstream and then six miles downstream for a total of eight hours. The kayaker can travel an average speed of two miles per hour. What is the average speed of the current? Okay, so there's a lot of information there. However, what they're trying to find is the speed of the current. So why don't we go ahead and make that known? So I'm going to assign that a variable. I'm going to say C equals average speed of current. Okay, so C is going to be the average speed of the current, and that is what we're trying to find. So what we're going to have to do here is build an equation. All right, and since we're dealing with rational equations, all right, you can probably say it's safe to say that this is going to be involving a rational um, equation. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out how we are going to set this up. So our total time is eight hours. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write eight equals. All right, so that is our total. Eight equals. Right, now think about what else we have, right? We have the distance, right? He traveled or the kayaker traveled six miles upstream and six miles downstream, right? So we have that distance. And we also have the average speed of the kayaker, which is going to be two miles per hour. Now remember, this is going to be in hours right here. So we want everything on the right side to match our units. So if this is hours, we also want this to be hours. So think about how you can go ahead and manipulate this so that given what you're um, using here, so if we have two miles per hour and we have six miles, how can I manipulate that so I make it into hours, right? Well, let's think about this. If he goes six miles upstream, I can say six miles, right? And if I put this over his average speed, which is two miles per hour, okay, well, look what happens here, miles, cancels out and you're going to be left with hours. That's what we're looking for. We want it to match up, right? Because this is hours, so we also want this to be hours. Okay, so that's how you're going to go ahead and set this up. However, all right, we have to take this one step further because we didn't take into account, okay, the speed or the average speed of the current. So let's erase this and let's take that speed into account now. So I'm going to have six miles over so the average speed of the kayaker was two miles per hour, okay? But if he's going upstream, right, his speed will naturally decline, right? Because he is going against the current, so his speed will naturally decline. So I'm going to say here, minus, okay, the speed of the current, right? That makes sense, because he's going upstream. Then we have to take into account L4 going downstream. So if I do plus, again, he went six miles downstream, so six. And then again, his average speed was two, but if he's going downstream now, right, he's going with the current, his speed will naturally increase. So we're gonna say here, plus C, okay? And this is now done. So your equation is now complete. Here it is, and now we can go ahead and solve. Now that is probably the most difficult part of this whole problem, right? Creating the equation. Solving it, okay, isn't too bad, but creating that equation can be difficult. All right, so again, it does take practice, uh, but that's why we're doing these, so we can practice, okay? So what we want to do here is get rid of these denominators. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. You could get a common denominator between the two here, and you would do that by multiplying, okay, here and here, both denominators together, and then taking care of your numerators. That might be a little more work than simply just multiplying them out. Okay, so for example, I'm going to start here. I want to get rid of this common or this denominator here. I need to multiply it out. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2 plus C. Okay, well, it will cancel out here. But since we're dealing with an equation, we need to balance it. So I'm going to do 2 plus C here as well and 2 plus C here as well. So what we will have is the following. We'll have 8 times... 2 plus C, okay, and this will be equal to, and then we'll have 6 times 2 plus C, all over 2 minus C, 
and this will be equal to, well, these canceled out, so just plus 6. Okay. All right, let's take care of this denominator now. So again, we're just going to multiply it out. All right, so let's show that we're going to do that. So we're just simply going to multiply this out. So we'll have 2 minus C. This will cancel, cancel. Again, we have to balance out the equation, so we have to do it to every term. 2 minus c, and then again, same thing over here, 2 minus c. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up and see what we have. Okay, so cleaning this up, we'll have the following. We'll have 8, 2 plus c times 2 minus c equal to, again, these canceled out. I still have this 6 times 2 plus c. Why don't we go ahead and expand that out? So 6 times 2 will be 12. 6 times c will be plus 6c. Again, same thing over here. 6 times 2 will be 12, plus 12. And then 6 times a negative c will be negative 6c. Okay? Well, looking here, we can go ahead now and cancel out, right? We have a 6c and a negative 6c that cancels out. 12 and 12 are going to make 24, okay? We have 24 there. Okay, let's go ahead and erase some of this work so we have some room to continue on. So looking at the left side, let's go ahead and expand this out. So using FOIL, we're going to do 2 times 2, which is 4. So we'll have the following. We'll have 8 times 4. Outside and inside here will naturally cancel out because the signs are opposite. And then my last will be C times negative C, which is negative C squared. Again, we just did FOIL there. Okay, that's all we did. And then we said 12 plus 12 will be 24, equal to 24. All right, so we're almost done here. Okay, our next step, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this 8 inside. So I'll have 32, right? 8 times 4 is 32. And then 8 times a negative c squared. So I have negative 8c squared equal to 24, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange this so that my c squared term comes first. So I have negative 8 c squared plus 32, and this is all equal to 24. So look what we have here. It looks like we have a quadratic, right? And how can we go about solving this now? Well, if we move this 24 over to the left, right, we can solve for the zeros. So essentially, we're going to have two answers here, right? And we've been talking about this, and when we get two answers, there's a possibility that we're going to be dealing with an extraneous solution, meaning it doesn't make sense mathematically, okay? So we are going to get two answers here, and it will be our job at the end to determine which one does not make sense mathematically, okay? So I'm going to minus 24 on both sides here. So again, this will cancel, and I'll have a the following negative 8c squared, 32 in a negative 24, that will make plus 8, equal to 0. Okay. Now think about how you can go about solving this. What do we need to do next? Well, we need to factor, right? Well, look, I can take out a greatest common factor here of negative 8. And if I do that, I'll get the following. So if I take out a negative 8, I'm left with c squared, right, minus 1, to zero. Now look at here, this is going to be a difference of two squares. We can expand it further now. So now we'll have negative 8, and we'll have c plus 1, and c minus 1, all equal to zero. All right, so we're fully expanded now. Now we can go ahead and take each one of our factors, okay, set it equal to zero, and solve. So we're almost done here. Okay, let's erase this work, and we'll write our answer on the right side here. So going from left to right, I have a negative 8 first. So I'm going to have negative 8 equal to 0. Well, that doesn't tell me anything mathematically, right? There's no variable there, and I'm not solving for the current there, right? So if this is nullified, that is a meaningless value there. So then we're going to c plus 1, c plus 1 equal to 0. When I solve this, I get c is equal to negative 1. 
Okay, moving on to the next factor, I have c minus 1. And this is all equal to 0. When I solve, I'll get c is equal to 1. So I have two answers here. I have the current is negative 1 or the current is going to be 1. Now think about which one makes sense mathematically. Can you have a negative speed, right? Would it make sense to say that the, the average speed of the current is negative 1 miles per hour, right? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, and as a result, this is going to be considered an extraneous solution. So our real solution here, or our true solution, is going to be c equal to 1, meaning c equals 1 mile per hour. And again, that is going to be the average speed of the current. All right, so our final answer there was 1 mile per hour for the average speed of the current. And that's it.